Welcome back. This is Edison Abelard and we're back for what part three now of our video. Video JS and Green Sound. Now, now it's time for some real magic. So we're going to begin with our trusty friend, jQuery. Now you'll notice that I haven't gone through our JS files really, but we have Bootstrap in here. Not going to really be using it, but we do have jQuery and we have the full version of jQuery here. And the reason for that is, is I've used all, just about all the IDEs from Mac base to Windows base. And so far, this is the only one that truly knows how to read JavaScript files. So if you actually have these files with comments in them, um, and actually it is, it is fully capable of running through and giving you some kind of coherence, even if it's just a, the method or, or function names. So what I like to do is, although I prefer to have all these uh, minified versions, I still throw in the regular versions in here. So same thing with the video JS, I throw in the regular versions and all that does is just gives me the opportunity to, um, to actually work with it minified and upload the code minified. But my IDE can give me those little hints so that, you know, if I forget something, it's easier to type. So that's this setup. So what are we about to use? We need, so we have jQuery here. We're going to now need ourselves a our green sock layer. Um, it's going to be libs JS. Actually, obviously it's not on Google's. <laughs> so they're jumping onto Google's platform. Um, so, all right, so I'm lazy. This is what happens when you have a better IDE. You just stop working. Uh, so we're going to green sock. We're going to do the minified versions. What are we going to add? Mm, we'll do, we'll start off with tween max. Now I won't say why just yet, but there is a difference between the, the, the light version as well as the max version. But for right now, we're going to throw in tween max and we're going to plugins. And we're going to drop, what are we going to drop? I say we do CSS plugin. Now why? Tween Max does support a lot of things, but it might start to think if you don't throw in the CSS plugin, it's going to think that your properties that you're trying to do, whether it's top left, um, you know, scale, it's going to think that they're animating an object and not technically your CSS. So the reason, and that's the reason why you want to make sure you add this CSS plugin and that'll just enable it to know, Hey, we're, we're, you're, you're animating CSS files. All right, cool. So we're just going to create a new script. I love this IDE PHP storm. You heard it. <laughs> so let's first start off with doing our jQuery shorthand function. And this just replaces our need to do this one instead. Um, document that ready. So this just replaces that. Anything to, to cut down on the amount of coding, I'm cool with. Now I am typing this right in here. Typically I'd rather have them in an external file so you can minify it. But another great thing about this is, is that it is capable of finding, if I can remember what the, where this thing is, it is capable of actually finding all of your inline, here you go, extract. Um, it is capable of finding all of your inline CSS, inline CSS, inline CSS, as well as inline JavaScript and pull them out. So another great feature of PHP storm. Now, like I said, IntelliJ, all of their IDEs have these similar functionalities. It just breaks down to what are they prefab for. This one is just prefab for PHP and web. So you can do WebStorm if you don't do any PHP work. All right, so let's begin. First things first, what we need to do is, is if you're not familiar with jQuery, this is going to be simply our alien one, we're going to call this variable and we're just going to grab the DOM object. Now you can do this in many different ways. You can do, if you're cool with, with just straight JavaScript, you can write your get element by ID personally. 
jQuery is here for a good reason, so I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to quickly grab this, copy, and just paste it here. Make sure you add this hash. If you don't, it's not going to be able to find the ID because jQuery has a number of ways that it queries. <laughs> no pun intended. So all right, let, let's 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 start this magic. So tween max is actually a singleton class. So we can just do it and call it straight like this, which hold on. Let me just take a step back. I just wanted you to see the power of PHP Storm just real quick. This, whether or not it has all the details, this is what you really want. You want the power, you want your IDE to work with you, not against you. So I know I want to do from now. You can do from and to, but we're doing from and I'll look, and I'll show you why. Um, this is this is just straight alien. I want it to go over in four seconds. Now, remember that CSS plugin? Well, now that CSS plugin, this is just an object. That CSS plugin now allows us to do this CSS. Drop another um, curly brackets around that curly braces. And now we can choose whichever properties in CSS we want to to twerk. So let's do negative. I'm going to say 300 pixels. All right, cool. So now let's just reload this. As you can see, boom. Now we have this easing in. So now we know this works, right? I just want to add one more thing. I said the word easing in, and that was just out of habit. What I want to do is add this easing functionality. And all this is just another option, ease. And I'm using strong ease in and out. Actually, I want to use just ease in. And the difference is, is ease into the animation and ease out of the animation. Easing just adds more frame, more frames to the actual animation. Now this goes way, way back to Disney animation. And what you would do is to make the animation smoother, instead of doing, let's say, um, two in-betweens, you might add 10 in-betweens. And those 10 in-betweens will just make it just come out so much smoother. So that's what we're doing. We just want the animation to look smoother. Come on. See, that's just not smooth at all. Let's add that out in there. <laughs> um, there you go. So now you see it's just, just a little smoother. So now that we know this works, we can do quite a few things, actually. We can still do top. We can do um scale x can we say let's start this from point one maybe and let's just see how it looks okay okay i'm liking where this is going i'm liking where this is going and this is the fun of having such a, a powerful engine you can just bring life to your piece so there you go this, this, it gets a little cut off at the end and that's because we have the easing it was just a little bit, but as you can see, it just it adds so much more life to the piece. So we can change. So right now it's just the top. We can change the left. We can change the scale. We can change rotation. We can do a lot of things. So right now I really like the way this is going. So let's go ahead and do this, right? We can do a couple of things. Let's let's add a few of these in here. Let's just show you one possible way of adding more animation. And that's just to grab the other ones, two, three, and four. Now, if we want, we can control them all separately, really. I'm going to bring these all to one line so that it's just a tad bit neater. Yeah, this is absolutely dirty, just, just so you know. Um, one, two, three, four, five. And let's make sure we add six in there. I know, I know, you don't exist. Once again, your IDE should always work with you, not against you. Remind me that I'm still messing up. <laughs> Since let's cut down. All right, so we want, we don't want to control each one individually. So we're going to create a time, and we're going to call this, call it. We're going to make this two and a half seconds 
Okay, so that the whole animation will always take two and a half seconds. So we're just going to replace four. I'm going to replace that with time. Now, what I was going to do is find and replace, but I thought about it. And I don't know if there's another four and I don't feel like going through and having to double check. All right, so now everything's going to happen in two and a half seconds. We have the correct values. Now let's watch. Whoa, problem. They all happen, actually not a problem. This is great. They're all coming in, but they're just coming in at the same time. <laughs> let's increase this to three. And right now this is strong. We're probably gonna to wanna to change some of them just so they're offset a little bit. But okay, okay, so so we're, we're, we're definitely on our way. But there's one thing that I want to add to this. And after the ease, let's add a delay, right? So let's delay this for, oh, uh, what? Let's say two seconds, all right? So we're just going to manually add this in here and just delay these. Now, once again, if you use if you use this for flash, you're, you're, you're probably like, wait, isn't there something else we can use? And you're absolutely right. There is something else that we can use. And um, in a later tutorial, I'll show you how to optimize these things so that you can really catch some speed with, um, with using this in more efficient ways and better ways than just adding delays to everything. So we got one, two seconds. Next, next. Ooh, we didn't like how that one happened. Okay. So we have a little bit of, of, of rivalry going on. <laughs> Seems we're just cutting each other. Okay, so so now that we're seeing that, that these are working in, um, you know, they're working just, just a little too slow, we can actually add a delay to, to the top one to make sure that it shows up last. And let's let's cut these these delays down because you really don't want full second delays because it's too noticeable. So let's cut this down to 2.3, 2.8. Two point eight. Just random numbers I'm picking. Boom. So what happened there? I just randomly. Well, not everything is done randomly, but because of the delay, everything just looks so much smoother. We're not going to do five seconds here. We're going to do two point. Dare we be so bold? Okay. Now, in animation, nothing in life happens all at the same time, believe it or not. So we're going to shift this over to maybe three point three point two. And maybe let's let's take this first delay down to half a second, and let's 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 break all of these down by half, maybe half a second. So maybe one point five, uh, one point nine, maybe. All right, so we're we're just playing around with this. So you can definitely play around with this however you like. One point nine. This needs to be our only maybe two point two. Nice. All right, so now we have a cool animation. All right, cool. Thank you for watching this tutorial on VideoJS. And really, this one has been really focused on GreenSock. And just to recap what we've gone over, we've introduced this alien functionality, you know, sliding in. We added, we started using tween max from, and I, what I didn't say is the difference between from and to. Let's start this off with two, right? When you when you actually do two, you notice that it stays on the screen and it's gonna stay there because of the delay and then it went away. So the difference between from and to really is just that. Um, we Because we place our object where we wanted it, using from will allow us to then make it tween from to its current position. So in, you can think of it in exactly what we did. We already positioned everything. We don't want the position to change, we wanted to animate coming 
as if it was coming from another position to our current position. And two, on the other hand, it, it makes it move to another location. In our case, it's making it move to negative 300 pixels and moving to an, a scale X of 0.1 and a scale Y of 0.1. So in our case, from is really the best way to go. Um, there's, there's, it's, it's really a preference thing. If you would rather, instead of putting our, our values, these values in the CSS, we can put those values in, um, in our JavaScript code instead. But really, I prefer in this instance to go with from instead. So just a quick recap, we talked a little about the difference between from and to, um, showed you a little example of that. We were able to grab our, our DOM elements just simply using um, just basic jQuery. Um, something to note, this can take arrays. I repeat, it can take arrays. So if you want to do that, you can also do that. Um, so we covered that. Uh, we also covered adding our CSS, which is very important. Do not forget to add the CSS object. And in that object, add all of your variables. And make sure that if, and if you have any problems, any questions, um, you know, definitely feel free to post them on, um, whether it's on Passion 47, somebody will definitely let me know. Um, or you can post it on right in the YouTube um, comments area. Either way, I'll definitely um, get back to you and, and, you know, we can chop it up a little bit. But we have our scale. We, we, we spoke just a little bit about easing and how or the benefits of easing in and out um, and really where it came from and adding delay. So in our next video, we should definitely start going into a little bit of video, right? I think, I think that's kind of what everybody's been waiting for. So in our next video, let's add a little bit of video to it. And um, by video, I mean using one of our previous videos and just encoding it and showing you, maybe we can even show you the encoding process. Um, media encoder, this is, I'm definitely rocking CS6. So um, media encoder can definitely push out um, MP4s. We're just going to use MP4s for this. Um, I'll do another video that, that will cover really um, the breadth of, of, of HTML5 video, the benefits and the drawbacks, and, and really some, some nice quick tips on how to effectively use video JS. But for now, we're just going to include a video JS um, script and show you how you can easily start playing HTML5 videos in our new little interactive piece. So this is Edith and Abelard. Really hope that you're enjoying these videos. And if you have any questions, please, like with all the videos, I'm just one post away. Edith and Abelard, I'm out.